And we're back. We're messing with the carburetor. That thing right there. Um, we're messing with it. Um, we're changing jets and shit like that. I've already done a whole bunch of other stuff. And um, I'm just searching for more power. Power. Power! Okay, we got blue. Uh, we're working on. Uh, we are installing a wide band. Wide band, yay! So we're running all the cables through here. So we're yeah. So this is why it's all like this. But basically, the te water temperature. <laughs> sorry, the temp oil temperature is going to be right here. I'm just making the hole on the rubber. So we're going to transfer that hole onto the steel this guy so that um it looks a little normal and we thought of running it like that but it looks kind of weird <laughs> so we don't have to modify this and destroy it you know what i mean it's not reversible once you cut it so whatever so right now we're trying to fit the o2 sensor bung this bung so i'm using an old oxygen sensor to see more or less how we're gonna Hook it up to the sidewinder right here. And we're finally done. Oh boy! There we go. It's our oxygen sensor. Um, yeah, it does a preheat thing. Um, it actually works pretty good. I've been driving it and um, determined that my, my idle is actually a little on the tad ridge. And my transitional twin... Uh, brass tubes that are at the very top of the carburetor uh, those twin uh, tubes are way too big uh, I remember I told you guys if you guys have been watching my videos I said there were a hundred and five millimeters or 1.05 millimeters which is really big it should be somewhere around 80 or 90 you know 0 0.80 0 0.90 millimeters and um, I already went ahead and dropped that down to 85 on both of them. And we've got a, a way better mixture now for cruising. But I noticed that the very low RPMs are still too stinking rich, which means my idle is just too rich. I've got my main um, right in the ballpark, more or less. I might have to drop it down a hair, but I want to drop down the idle. I think that's going to correct the main. So that's the whole thing but um yeah we got that thing in there and it's working great we let me show you uh where i ended up putting the oxygen sensor okay let's see if we can there we go that's where i ended up putting it my son was not you know he was working so i'm the one that did the welding so it looks like shit but we have zero leaks <laughs> not the most pretty it's in an area where you can't really see it see can't see it. She's not visible. So goes in like yay. Little little tie strip right there. Because we want to keep it away from the muffler. And then she connects right there. And then some tie strips up there. Keep everything safely tucked away. Alright, she's stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and um Remove the idle on the carburetor, and uh, I'm actually going to solder it because I don't have a drill that can drop it down the amount that I want. So that one's a little too big. So what I'm going to do is just solder it and then redrill it with a a smaller drill, and then open it up with a reamer. Did that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Right? Yeah, a reamer. So and because uh, the reamer is a lot easier to ream when it's been soldered. The solder will actually move apart, you know, like it's when you're not using a drill. Anyways, hope that made sense. That's the whole idea. So I'm gonna get my shit ready and we're gonna go ahead and solder it. Okay, so currently, uh, if I can pick up these drills, um, this is what we're running. Okay, that is, that is, it's actually a 68, 69, right there. Uh, millimeters. Eh. Anyways. That's what I used to drill this guy. Which is the idle. Um, 
this idle was set up for the bow car. Okay, now the bow car has a bigger throttle or bigger throat. Okay, it's 34 millimeters. Okay, the Kippa, once we remove the Venturi, it's not actually 34 millimeters. It's actually 33. So we went from having a, a bigger throat to a smaller throat which now causes more suction in this area. So it sucks more fuel, thus giving me a rich condition. This is why I've, I've had to drop every everything on that carburetor, drop it down to a lower number. So this is a, like I said, it's a, see? It's a 69. And originally we needed a, a 70. That's what I was running on the, on the uh, Boker. But now we're gonna drop it down to, we're going to start with a 60 and then we're going to ream it because I have a reamer here. Yeah, I made this reamer. This is just carbon steel from an antenna for a remote control car. And as you can see right there, it's actually thinner right there. And then this part is the size that I want. I just use a, a Dremel, you know, really simple thing to do. And basically, like, yay. There you go. So we're going to turn it into a 64 uh, with the solder. After we drill it and then uh, drill it with the reamer. Um, this is this is because if, if I tried using this reamer on just bare brass, forget it. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to drill through solid brass with, with the reamer. So this is why it needs to be soldered for the idle. All right, we're gonna completely plug that shit up. We're gonna weld some shit. Shit you never thought you were gonna be doing with electronic solder. <laughs> That's what it is. This is the best solder I ever used when I was doing a lot of R&D. This is actually the exact same one that I, that I used at work. Best solder ever for all kinds of crafts. It's not just electronics. We don't need a lot of solder, just we just need to get this up to temperature. Okay, see if it'll melt. No, it will not. Okay, try it again. No, it will not. Okay, that should be you know. It is not melting. There we go. It's more than enough. I'm just gonna heat it so it, there you go. It popped and it went, <laughs> went inside. That's all we need. There's a trick to this, okay? Now I'm gonna leave it like that and let it cool down. And we're gonna go ahead and actually do a pre-drill, which is gonna mimic the Venturi that was there. That thing is hot as hell. I just saw it skin over. I saw it, like a little way went, whoop, it skimmed over. So I know it's solid now, but I can guarantee you it's hot. Ugh, yeah, that sizzled. <laughs> sizzled, I'll bring you back when it's cool. We're just gonna do this. I don't know if you can see that. Well, like, we could do it, I guess, sideways. And I'm just spinning it. Now we have a nice little cup. Now if I try drilling, it'll self-center because it, you know, it's at the bottom of the pit, the little V, V shape or cup. It'll self-center. All right, we're good. We're gonna go ahead and start drilling with that. So some of you might be asking, why don't you just grab a new one and drill it to the proper size? Well, like I said, um, you can't, I don't have the drill that is a, a 64 or a 65. I don't have that. So I have to use what I've got, really. I got to think outside the box. So thinking outside the box is soldering to a smaller size with this. This this is with like a 60. 
This will drill it down to a 60, and then we're going to ream it up to 64. Because you can't drill with, you can't ream, uh, you can't ream uh, brass. Unless you have a real drill. Okay, a real drill. And I don't have that. Anyways, that's the reason why it's like that. Let me get it all set up and we're going to be drilling it. So I just ran into another snafu. Turns out, you see that little hole? That is way too big to hold that little tiny drill. Something happened, it got bigger, and now it is too big. So uh, now I have to grab like a grinder and go through the center, you know, a disc, just, you know, so, so that it's able to collapse further in and, and crush that little thing. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta think outside the box again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this and uh, we'll be back. So what I'm gonna do is just a, a Dremel with a little, I guess, round disc. It's a hacksaw kind of style disc. It's serrated edge or whatever you want to call that. So. Ah. Okay, that one in. Okay. So now we're gonna put this back in here and put this back. I can already tell it was it was too tight right now. She's on there. Now she's getting tight. That's how you fix that shit. So now I'm just gonna go and do this. Okay. I'm not gonna bore you with this. I'm gonna put this on a vise because um, I, I see that I'm wobbling too much. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's starting to go in. Ah, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on a vise. So now I'm gonna drill. Just now that I'm very stable, see, because I'm going to go like this and just spin it. And that should give me more stability so I shouldn't round it out. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's the whole thing. So um, I'm blocking you. There's some point in showing you this because I'm just blocking the heck out of you. So I'll be back when it's fully drilled. All right. She's all done. Went through. Okay. Just got to clean that shit. And it should be all done. Um, okay, now we're going to actually ream it. And I... I don't know what I did with my reamer. God dang it. I lost my reamer. I might have to make a new one. Whew. Found my reamer. I was, I, was, I, was, I was shitting bricks there for a minute. I was actually sad. I was like, oh man, I gotta make a reamer. They're... they're like, you have to like make it really small right here then this side right there because uh this is the size that you want and this is just an empty spot so that you know when you go through you go through right right so let's just ream it's a little tough but it's going in i feel it going in come on there we go. You see that? It just went thunk. Just went thunk. You know, like that. Okay. Now I'm going to back it out. Okay, this is a 64, okay? 0.64 millimeters. That is our new jet size right there. We're going to grab a drill, a small drill. We're just going to clean up the, the, the flash. I'll just do this real quick like that. Um... There's a YouTuber that tried this about seven, eight years ago. I remember I made my first video. He actually saw my video. I know he was, he was watching my videos. And he tried doing this. Could not do it. The guy, even though he was a, like a machinist, you know, retired machinist. And um, he couldn't do it. I'm not saying he doesn't have the skill. I'm just saying he never did really, really, really... Uh, critical tiny parts and i've done this all my life just working with surface mounts you know electronics and shit really really delicate shit and um 
this is no different to me. It's no different. It's just whatever. Anyways, I did it. He couldn't. I just left my ass off, but whatever. He can do it. Uh, take skill. Okay, this does take skill. Um, I'm pretty sure anybody can do it. Okay, just practice and practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay, moving on. Let's put this on the uh, the car. But first, I'm going to blow it out just to make sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. The jet is back in there. Can't really see it. Yeah. Man, trust me. It's it's on this side. <laughs> it's right next to the choke. Okay, right there, right there. I'm actually touching it with my finger. Anyways, it's back in there, so we're gonna see how it runs. I just want I need to start it and see how it idles. Usually, the idle just idling when you rev it up a little bit, it'll it'll tell you how it's gonna run. It gives you an idea. It's a little different, a little more different when you have an actual load. Okay, it's running. I want to see what this does. And this took a shit. I already checked. I really do have oil pressure. They're garbage. They're $16. I mean, what do you expect? I need to see what it's going to do. Come on. It's taking forever. cold and that's actually what you want to see on your idol 13 13 5 it's a little uh, I need to adjust it a little bit but that's actually better than it was engines cold that's why it does that. I don't have a choke, remember? I need to put a load on it. Um, it's, it, it gives me an idea. It, 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 it's telling me that I'm slightly rich. Um, ah, damn it. So I might have to drop it down to 60. 60? That's a lot from a 70 to a 60. Um, that also might be my twin jets. They might be a little too big already. I already dropped them down, like I said, down to uh, 85s. Uh, and they used to be 105 or 1.05. And now they're 0.85. And um, that might be kicking a little too early. Also, what I could do is actually bend those 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 brass thingies, injectors or uh, secondaries up higher so that they don't hit early. You know, they hit a little higher on the RPM range, which is actually, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. And actually just so they, they don't hit that early. Because I think I have them dialed in. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually just pull them up a little higher. That's the measurement. I got the measurement from this very edge down to the tip of these uh, twin jets. And this is how I got it. Like that. And then, yeah. That's how I got it. So now I'm going to put a screwdriver right there. And just bend it up. Okay. I bent that one already. Oh, this one. Okay. Went ahead and bent that one already. So we're looking for a smaller number. Uh, yeah, smaller number. Let's see. Okay. So almost, almost a millimeter higher. 
So let me try the other one. See if I have the same measurement. No, it's less. Actually, we, we want them to be kind of on the same level. So we're going to go ahead and bend it a little bit more. Very careful because you can snap these off. I have another one, the, the one from the bull car, but I don't want to be messing around with that one because that one's a fully functional carburetor. Okay. They're very close, almost identical to the same height. So let me try and see what kind of results we get with that. All right, here we go. Let's see what it did. Uh, I actually, this is like the second time I bent those things up. So we're at two and a half millimeters. Uh, instead of one millimeter, I went up two and a half millimeters. Let's see what it does. Come on. Taking forever. Let me rev it up. It was going into the lower, uh, to the mid tens. Mid tens. See what it does. Oh, we had a drastic improvement. Drastic improvement. Okay, that was a drastic improvement. I'm gonna leave them there. Um, I or I might actually no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bend them up higher. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm going to mess with the uh, with the main. I'm just gonna drop it because I notice that when I get my RPMs get to about three thousand, that's when I start going rich. Okay, it used to be down here. Like, well, it still is kind of sorted. It's still kind of running like in the in the twelves. <clears throat> but when I hit here, this is where it, it starts going uh, a little, you know, like in 11, uh, 11, 5, 11, 8, you know. So I'm thinking I'm running a little too rich on the main. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Currently, uh, I'm running a 180. So I'm probably going to drop it down to like, like a 175-ish, 175-ish. Maybe 170, more or less, and see how that works. Okay. I already have those jets pre-drilled, so that way I can just swap it out and uh, be on my way. All right. Ooh, I've, okay, I've, I've done a lot of uh, adjusting. There's just no way I can show you all this stuff. It's just too much shit. Um, I'm actually dropped down my idle jet a little bit more. Now it's a 61 instead of 64. So now it's at 61. Uh, so, so far, we're almost, we've dropped almost 10 points. Uh, we, we were very close to 70s, and now we're 60s. Okay, here it goes. Okay, so I got it to a little more, more normal now. She's actually doing it right now. Went to 13. So that's what I want. Now with the load, I think it should perform perfectly. Yay! Day two. Okay, so this car likes to idle at 1100 RPMs, but look at my black box. Look what it says. Yeah, 1300 RPMs. The funny thing is that my green car does the exact same thing. It says that I'm idling like at 1150 somewhere around there and my tachometer on my green bug says that I'm at like 800. So I don't know if that's a misread on the uh, RPMs. It doesn't sound like it's 1300 RPMs um, just by hearing it by ear. That's weird. Anyways, so I went ahead, I was able to get this guy into where I wanted for the idle. Okay, that's the idle now, permanently. Um, now that we're running the choke, 
it doesn't go over here to 17 or 18 or anything like that it just stays there in that area when it's uh, choke is on it's actually running like over here like dancing right here you know 11 12 and then the choke starts to come off and it goes to right there which is perfect that is perfect and what I'm what I'm looking for is that when I step on the throttle I want to hear if there's a choke like like a uh, you know what I mean and that's where you adjust the, the pump that's where you're adjusting the pump okay there's a little bit but I went like boom like a lot and that's normal remember this is a center mount it takes a while for fuel to get to the cylinders to both sides so you get that little uh but if you get like a whoop, uh, like that, okay, you need to add more pump on your little screw. You know, move it towards the uh, negative side. Negative means more more fuel. It's Germans. I don't know how, how they came up with that one. But if you move it towards the positive on the pump uh, screw on the side, um, it'll, you go to the positive, it'll give you less fuel. You go to the negative and you get more fuel. I don't know, whatever. Um, okay. I'm happy where it is. Okay, I'm gonna accelerate slowly. Still running really rich in the middle. Okay, goes out to the mid 13s with no load. I expect that to be completely different when I'm driving. And uh, we found a lot of torque. <laughs> Lost horsepower but again a shitload of torque uh, I was running a hundred and thirty seven torque average it never changed maybe every now and then it would hit 139 well that thing jumped up to a hundred and sixty two consecutively and my horsepower was at 135 and 136 so we lost like five horses but we gained a shitload of torque and you can feel the torque I mean, you could, it was like, wait, uh, can I keep the torque and just forget about those five horses? Because <laughs> you can feel the torque. Anyways, it's just a stack. I took out the air cleaner because I figured I might be starving the engine for air. And I wanted to try this. I have not tried it. I just, I got 162 torque without this and without any air cleaner. Just like that. I just went for a pull like that just to see what it would do. And, um... 162 torque and 136 horsepower um and because this is a, a stack Let's see it's got a like a venturi like a venturi thing right there so see yeah anyways because i want to see how that runs without the air filter i just want to see what kind of horsepower we can get so that's the whole idea Okay, so we're gonna go for a drive, see what it does. Um, maybe it'll do better. I'm waiting for the choke to come off completely because that's gonna choke the engine, make, giving me a rich you know, reading when I'm running here. So I just wanna make sure that it's nice and warm before I go for the first pull. Okay, so this, I mean, it runs okay and everything. Um, it, there's too many numerous things that I've done and I think I still need to do some other stuff I'm still running too rich on the uh, on the twin jets so uh, I think I know why I think I have to drill out the, the air hole on the twin jets uh, those are uh, I believe they're like 110s originally and uh, the Kippa come, carburetor comes with uh, like 80s. So I might have to increase that to, so that the, the middle twin jets don't hit too early. Anyways, I'm gonna get ready to do a pull. Okay, it says go. <laughs> Let's see how it turns out. I'm gonna keep an eye on this because I wanna see what it does. We're going.
okay so we lost <laughs> we lost some torque damn it but uh but uh what you call it let me see if i can get a closer view oh it doesn't change anymore it's a 135 and a half ah horsepower is about the same basically uh we lost some torque though which is significant actually we lost 12. but we're still in the 150s though which is good okay so we just got back to the to our yard <laughs> i was gonna say yard uh, I, I always go to the yard anyways uh we just got back to our garage and this is what we made the second pull so we gained a little bit more uh torque and a little bit more horsepower um yeah okay so let's compare that with in uh in graphs see what we're at okay and this is where we just i'm gonna have to call it quits for this video it's too freaking long um summary real quick uh i started messing with the jets we lost about f four horses about four horses at, at, after the last pull from 141 so but we gained a shitload of torque okay i still have to do a lot of things to the carburetor i suspect that the auxiliary jets the air corrector that's inside the top it's actually on in the top you open it up you flip it over and you, you can drill them out bigger those are actually smaller which means that those air uh, twin jets actually hit really early and no much no matter how much i bend them up they're still hitting too early because those uh, air corrector holes for those twin jets are too small so the smaller more you pull on the air corrector more fuel you pull on the air corrector um the like i said a, a couple of minutes ago basically those are i think 80s from the new carburetor the stock carburetor comes with 110 i believe millimeters 1.10 millimeters okay so it's a lot bigger uh, by let's see uh, 82 so that's like uh 0.3 zero millimeters so that's a lot that, that is a lot that's that's a huge thing and i think that's what it is i just need to pull fuel from there because that is actually supplementing too much fuel to the main you know because it's just too much fuel so i'm having to drop my main to a ridiculous size to compensate for the center part of the of the uh it, because this is a triple it's a tri-jet okay and the the middle one the, the second jet or jets are hitting too too much fuel and um we need to basically correct that so that i have a more linear but this is what we got if you can see that uh basically we got 137.2 the last pull with 153 pounds of torque that's pretty damn good. you could feel that okay yesterday when i did it i got 163 and damn that you could really feel that it's like whoa but i got a little bit less horses like two ponies or one pony or some shit like that but um it's within you know the margin of error whatever but fueling is i think i'm, I'm flooding uh too much fuel to the main because at wide open throttle when i hit the 6,000 rpms i'm still hitting on my wide band 1240 1250 okay that's too much fuel and i'm already really tiny on the on the uh on the main so i'm gonna i'm not gonna make it any smaller so what i'm gonna do is like i said i, I have to correct that shit. but yeah we got 141 tops as you can see on the graph and and then i started fucking around with all the jets and i i kind of made it worse and then i've got it better and better and better and better and it's it's been getting better because now i have a white band now i know what i'm doing before i was just doing you know flying by braille that's what <laughs> all by ear and um okay anyways so that's pretty much it we touch we touch i hope you like the video it is very tink uh tinkerish you know but i think it teaches you how to you know solve situations fueling situations so all right on this new carb all right i gotta go goodbye